Fingers crossed. show you what we got going on here in this holly box and how we're going to attack it. So the part number that I got is 550917 and that's the Terminator Max. Uh, they call it the early truck kit because it has the Multitech 2 injectors which are the stock injectors on the very early uh, 5.3, 4.8 and, and 6 liters like 99 through 06 I think. I'm not 100% sure but that's what I think. And it also comes with a transmission harness and the ECU actually has a couple more ports than the regular Terminator X. So this is a Terminator X Max. Um, the couple different ports on the ECU are for one, this right here, which is actually a transmission harness for 4L ADE. And if you guys have been following my build, you know I have a Turbo 400 in the Dakota. Uh, I bought this for the future because I plan to eventually um, put a 4L ADE in the truck so it can drive comfortably on the highway and be more, you know, street friendly. Um, so this, I'm not doing anything with today. This will be a future install. It also has an additional port for an electronic throttle cable. And I don't know if I'm going to use that in the future, but it'd be nice to have the opportunity to do so. so let me show you what else we got. So this right here is the main engine harness. And what's cool about it is everything is really, really well labeled. Like this is the oil pressure sensor. It's got oil on it. This is the cam sensor. It's got cam, you know, labeling on it. Uh, these two, I think, go into the, har uh, the holly uh, itself. And you'll see that it's P1B and P1A uh, and so forth. So you have your uh, odd ignition. So this is cylinder 1357 on the driver's side. So anyway, we'll go. I'm gonna go over every connection on this video, so you'll know where everything goes. But uh, that's a main engine harness. Following that is actually the injector harness. And what's kind of cool about this is if I uh, upgrade injectors later on, because I do run run uh, E85 and I built a truck to run E85, I can just buy a different harness that's got the different connectors for different kinds of injectors. So. Uh, that's also a cool feature of the, the, the Terminator. Um, you don't have to buy the adapters and run extra cable. This is probably what I'm going to put on first, I believe. This is the main power harness, correct? Yep. So there's your red and black wires. And I'm going to be running these directly to the battery in the back of the truck because that's what they recommend. They don't want you going to any other power sources. They said don't go to the starter and don't go to the frame for the ground. So I'm going to run this all the way to the back, trim as needed, and uh, route into the truck. So from there, I think this is the output cable. Um, so or input. Actually, I think it's both. It's outputs and inputs. So you can send signals from the Holly Terminator uh, EFI system to certain things, and you can also get different inputs. For example. I'm going to send a trigger from the Holly Terminator ECU to uh, ground my electric fan relay and turn my electric fan on at certain times. Um, so that happens through this cable. Additionally, you can also do stuff like if you want to run a transmission temperature sensor, you can throw it into one of these wires, and I don't know which ones are rich yet, um, and tell the uh, ECU what it is, and the ECU will now monitor that sensor. So you can see it on your little... Uh, uh, three and a half inch display or if you have one of the bigger Holly Terminator uh, screens. And what's really cool which I didn't realize is it comes with its own O2 sensor so uh, you don't have to go out and buy one and this is you know a wideband O2 so it's measuring your FCO ratio and that's it and you only have to run one of them so you don't have to run dual O2s it's not for emissions obviously and this is where the Terminator gets its information for 
um, to one data log and to also uh, adjust and, and self-learn and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Um, this is an adapter for that, I believe. Um, so it goes into the harness correctly. So this is an adapter for the OT sensor. And then lastly, the coolest little thing is it comes with this uh, three and a half inch uh, display, which not only is a display, you can do some adjustments in it. You run a wizard when you first set everything up um, through it and uh, comes with a, a, a stylus, which is great. And uh, I'll be mounting this in the cab of the truck uh, to do some monitoring. So I'll monitor uh, oil pressure with this and I'll monitor temperature um, with this and uh, kind of go from there. Um, I did actually buy the cable as well to be able to go to my laptop. So this is uh, super cool. And lastly, what we have here is the ECU itself. Yes. So this is the ECU itself. These are like the main terminals. One of them does something different. I hadn't gotten that far yet to know what everything does. Um, but this is where everything plugs into and uh, this is your main power source. I can tell that and it actually has an onboard uh, map sensor I believe so you can actually use this to measure like boost and vacuum if you needed to I don't think I have to use it So I'll just leave it unplugged uh, until I go turbo one day So but you can see the Terminator X has one two three four five outlets two are for power one's for I'm sorry two are for your harnesses uh, your main engine harness, one's for the transmission, I think one's for the throttle by wire, and one's for the main power harness. Um, it's not very big, it's very light, it's going to be easy to mount, and uh, it actually has diagnostic uh, little bubble on it, so that's really, really cool. And I'm excited to get started. The last thing I see in here, one, you got to have some stickers because that's just awesome, but it actually comes with an O2 bum. Which I didn't know it came with, so that's super cool. And then additional connectors for the uh, vacuum source. So I'm going to put these up in the transmission box in case I ever need to use them. And then I'm going to put the transmission box uh, in my toolbox to keep safekeeping. There's a, a special sensor that's actually located within the mass airflow sensor, which I'm not going to run on this setup because the Holly doesn't need it. Um, but we need that air intake uh, temperature sensor to be able to monitor those temps and adjust the fuel and stuff accordingly, which the computer will do itself. So there's a very common trick that people do to where they pull out the EVAP uh, purge solenoid that's in the front of the intake, which I actually have already done. I actually bypassed it. Um, but you can drill that little area out and put in a air intake sensor. So I have bought the sensor and I'm about to pull the plug out of the intake manifold. Um, and just to let you guys know, if you're going to do a Holly, um, what I did is I, I've got this, it's part number AX32. I got it from O'Reilly's and it's for any OBD2 like Chevrolet vehicle. So for example, I looked up a 2000, I'm sorry, 1996 Chevrolet S10, which is OBD2. And I got this sensor, which is that part number. And it, uh, it actually fits in the harness and everything like it's supposed to. And I'm gonna show you guys how we uh, get that in the engine. All right, so you can see here that I have this little block off, this little billet block off plate. And I'm going to remove that because there's actually a hole right there. And the goal is to pull this out of here. And we'll be putting our IAT sensor in here. The only thing is you do have to drill it out a little bit. So I'm going to pull the throttle body off real quick and then find the right size drill bit and bring out the vacuum because I want to suck out any bits that go into the intake. All right, so I'm going to try this drill bit first, which is a 3164. So when I play the, uh, the uh, center behind it, I can still see there's some room on the shoulders. Uh, so I'm going to try that first. 
And I actually have my shop vac right here, so I'm gonna turn my shop vac on while I drill this out. So I can cut any of the plastic burrs. not going to do it so I need a little bit more. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing now with a half inch drill bit which is the biggest I can fit on this uh, shot. What do we got here? Still not quite enough, man. I'm going to go run this edge real quick over just a little bit on my uh, bench grinder and uh, it should bring it down some. Alright, so you can see I ground, uh, hopefully you can see that, I ground that last little bit of a ridge off of there and it actually fits pretty good in there. Um, I'm going to RTV it and pull out the, uh, the dead blow hammer and uh, Tap it on in there. All right, RTV is applied and we're going in. And I'm not doing well with that. Just a little bit more. There it goes. Wow. I'm impressed. Alright guys. There it is. Right in the uh, stream. The air stream. So you should get an accurate reading. And it's uh, bottomed out pretty good in there. So that first mod is done. Let me get the uh, harnesses out and start planning with that. Okay guys, to give a perspective on how long this uh, power cable is, it's pretty much as uh, long as the Dakota. Um, I've got it laid out here. It's got ample room to go to a rear mount battery. Obviously I'm gonna trim it um, when we get to the battery. But just in case you're wondering how long it was, it, it's gotta be, I don't know, 12, 13 foot, something like that. And uh, it's plenty. So that's, uh, that's good news. All right, guys, let me show you what my plan of attack is so far. I've got this, like, it's almost like an inch and three quarter hole on the firewall. I forgot what went there. I'm sure it has something to do with air conditioning and I don't have air conditioning anymore, so it's gone. So it was either that or a wire harness. I found at the parts store, O'Reilly's is where I went, this uh, Dorman, uh, like, grommet kit. It's 42301. And it says oil filler tube, but let me explain a little bit more what it had in it. This is the main harness for the Terminator X. This is the power harness for the Terminator X. And it actually came with this grommet in that Dorman kit. This grommet fits that hole really, really well. And I was just able to stretch it over. I stretched it over this long one first, got it here. Then I stretched it over the short one. And then I put the uh, power wire connections through it. And then actually, uh, it's going to be a really good grommet. So I'm going to put that stuff through the firewall now. And uh, it'll give me a good idea on where to start. Because um, I'm going to have to trim this power cable. And I uh, also need to figure out where to mount the Holly Terminator X. So let me go get this in place. And then we can uh, make some plans from there. All right, guys little update I had to move that grommet even further down and I've got it right here and that was kind of a chore there's a relay here and so I took the relay off and I was able to like squeeze it over all of this with this you know the help of a screwdriver to get it kind of up and over um, so this was kind of hard to get over at the same time but it did stretch enough to get over did not hurt it these are your 
uh, ground and power uh, switch power wires for the unit so I'm actually gonna hook these up inside the truck so that's good um, you have another fuse here that has a like a cover on it I don't know where I put the cover I'll find that in a minute I think I know where it went and this actually goes to your three and a half inch uh, little screen so all this is going to be inside the cab along with your power tap and like your inputs and outputs so i've moved that grommet all the way up in front of those and now i'm going to put it back in and put the uh, power wire uh, back through it uh, so you'll have to get creative with how you get the harness in if you use this hole what i had to do is take that big relay that we had to stretch it out over I put it in first and then I put the main connectors in and kind of snaked everything then that way. Uh, if you don't do it, I don't think you can get the harness in and the relay later on. Uh, so just take your time, make sure you don't cut any wires and uh, just kind of be a little finesseful with it and uh, it'll go in. Uh, just as you can see here and I'm about to throw the uh, power connections through it and throw it in and then get back to working on the power. So I'm going to make a little bit of a change of plans here. In order to figure out where I need to mount the ECU, I'm going to go ahead and make my connections on the engine. That'll tell me how much like play I have in the cab and uh, it'll help me determine uh, like how much to trim off the power or if I need to come in with the power at a different spot in the car. So uh, to start that, I'm going to work on the ground and on this harness, um, this is the uh, coil connector, so it goes in the, the ignition coils here. On each one of these coil connectors on each side, you have a ground here, sorry, down there. And it tells you connect to cylinder head only, and that's really, really important, and that's where I'm going to start. So since this one is for the evens, which is two, four, six, eight on the passenger side, I'm going to go ahead and there's a hole you cannot see it I can't show it to you guys but it's on the very top of the cylinder head over here and I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and connect my grounds first so I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the rest of the uh, wiring so I'm gonna do passenger side and the driver side in the same spot just uh, perpendicular to each other you know symmetrical so let me do that then I'll show you and then I'll go plug after plug with you all right guys right there is the ground for the uh, passenger side head and the passenger side uh, ignition coils all right so I haven't moved over to the driver's side yet I'm gonna run a couple wires first this first wire it's got chrome on it is the actually the crank sensor and it's gonna go down in between the firewall And it's going to hook up to this plug straight down here above the starter. Down in there is a crank sensor. And I've gotten it, uh, the wire. It's got a heat coating on it, which is great. But I also got it kind of zip tied to the starter because my headers are really close to it. So I'm going to make sure we keep all that heat away from it if we can. Here's another look at it. So that's the only wire that goes down there. So. Now we can work on the rest. It's kind of going to be the hardest one, I feel. The rest should be pretty easy. Okay, so I've actually already ran into one issue, but since I took the intake manifold off to correct that issue, I figured I'd explain what's going on and show where some of the other wires go and uh, get those hooked up. This is a factory oil pressure sensor for a 2000 or 2001 Chevy truck. This is the pigtail that goes to it, and they are not the same. Um, so I gotta go run down and get a oil pressure sensor for like a 2004 Silverado and get that changed out. So I'm going to do that, but while I'm down here, you see this right here? That is the cam sensor. You can see cam right there on the uh, wire right there. This cam sensor actually plugs in right here. So while we're here, we'll do that. And then I'll work on getting this out. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to buy a socket for it, but oh well. But uh, I'll go down to the parts store and get that and start working on some of the other stuff while the intake manifold's off. 
Okay guys, I just hooked up the ground and there's actually a ground strap to the uh, um, to the frame um, on this side and you can see I put that ground on the driver side cylinder head so I got one on each cylinder head one for the driver side one for the passenger side so that's there um, and I'm gonna hook up a couple more things while I have the intake manifold off this is what these are knock sensors um, and this is actually what this goes to right here so again knock sensors in on the valley of the motor and then into this sensor right here I'm not sure if we're going to use these. I, ha I heard you can program them out, but might as well hook it up. Alrighty. I went and got a oil pressure send sending unit for a uh, 2004 5.3 Silverado. And it's got the three prong connector on it. It comes with this filter. I am not going to use that filter. I think that's a bad idea. Um, but yeah, so I already pulled the other one out and I've actually already tested the, uh, the prongs here. It fits really well. And I'm just going to throw this one in real quick. And since we still have the intake off, you can see really well. Actually has a crush washer, so you're gonna want to get it pretty tight. Crush that washer so it seals. And then I'm gonna take my oil pressure sensor, which is this yellow one here, and there we go. Click. And this is the rest of the wiring here. So, uh, for the, at least for the driver side. So you can see this says ignition on on the driver side of the truck we have cylinder one three five and seven so this would definitely go here blink just like that we got the uh, coil packs plugged in on the driver's side we're gonna run the rest of the stuff this is CTS well you can see that it goes to the coolant temp sensor which is on the side of the block right here Actually, it's on the side of the driver's uh, cylinder head. So I'm going to click that in right there. I'm actually going to rerun that underneath this uh, alternator cable. That still has to be kind of moved around some. And then we go on to the throttle body. Should be three sensors for this. Uh, again, we're not, this is a fuel pressure sensor, which we're not using right now. So I'll probably tape this back later. But this is the uh, idle air control, and it can only go one place. It goes up here at the top. And then this is the throttle position sensor, TPS, and it goes down here at the bottom. Sorry, guys, I had to put the camera down for a second. But uh, again, this is their throttle position sensor. Um, and then this fuel, I'm just going to kind of pull back here because I'm gonna tape that over there okay I almost forgot this this is the uh, manifold air temperature sensor the one that we put in there earlier and we'll get that set up click right on there we go I'll have to like, kind of get that routed down there a little bit but so when it comes to the driver side harness we are technically done so that's really, really cool. It's nice and clean out of the way. Now we'll come back to the passenger side. And we only have a couple things. So we have ignition even. So remember, passenger side is two, four, six, and eight. So this will go here on these coil packs. Remember, we're grounded out on the cylinder head. I'm going to kind of run that underneath there. And then we have one last wired hookup on the engine itself. And that is what's called the MAP sensor. So uh, manifold something pressure, absolute pressure, I don't remember. But I do know it's a MAP sensor and it's up here on the top of the motor. So there we go. So the only thing I have left to do is there's this long cord right here, which I'm gonna have to figure out how to kind of 
coil it up or something, but this is for the oxygen sensor. So I'm going to get the uh, oxygen sensor put into the header real quick, and then uh, I'll show you um, the rest of that. So I'm actually gonna pull this header off uh, so I can get the um, V-band tightened up the way it's supposed to. So let me pull this header off and do that. Okay, all right, so O2 is in. I've got my uh, clamp tightened up there, and this is kind of my plan. So up there, right by the dipstick tube, that's the wire coming from the harness that attaches to the O2 sensor. So follow it down. I'm gonna show you what I'm planning on doing, and I hope it works. So I'm going, this is the actual O2 sensor, hold on. Damn it. So this end right here is the actual O2 sensor. This is coming from the Holly harness. And then I have put in one of the sides of the adapters. So now I'm gonna put this up and I'll come back and a little bit explain what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of loop it around and tie it to the uh, power supply line here. The reason I'm gonna do that, because this is really, really long, way longer than I would ever need it, and uh, it's kind of just gonna be in the way in the engine compartment, and then I can still get to all the connections here if I need to. All right, there it is. All tucked out, out of the way. It's not gonna flop or nothing, not gonna fall on the ground, which is good. It goes all the way up through the little opening right there to the O2 sensor and to the uh, wire for it. So, awesome, pretty good to go. These are wires and I'm about to hook up. Um, the green one goes to the fuel pump. The red one is actually the ignition on for the system. And the blue one is actually for a tachometer or a tachometer, sorry, said that a little fast. Um, but I'm gonna plan my power wires first and then I'll run these. So keep on moving. Okay guys, I am about to call it a night here. Let me show you what else I uh, kind of got planned and figured out. I didn't film a lot because I needed to get a plan in place and I actually got that done. So I actually uh, just mounted the ECU. It's actually on the inside of this uh, like kind of kick panel. I will have to be careful of any passengers over here, make sure they don't kick it, but it's like the best place I could put it that had like a flat surface. Um, I got pigtails one and two in the ECU and I actually got the power here. So tomorrow I'm going to, um, uh, this runs to an ignition power, which I already have figured out, and this black wire runs to a um, ground. So the red and white wire goes to Ignition hot while you're cranking. That's kind of important um, because you need to have power while you're cranking the engine so it fires over. Um, I'm just going to mount these two probably like kind of up here out of the way. It's a relay and a fuse. Um, so that'll be good to go. And if you look here, this output right here is the power lines. And I've got it running back. And I've got the, uh, that's the little fuse for it. Um, so I've got it running along the kick rail. So um, I'll have a, uh, the trim panel over that so you won't see it. And then it's going through a uh, grommet right here that goes down and I'm gonna run it to the back with the, uh, with the rest of the power cable so it hooks up to, directly to the battery. So that's inside the truck. Um, in the engine bay, a couple things. There's some loose wires here that you have to run. One is a red wire, and this has to go to a power source. Um, it says the battery, but since this is not powering the ECU, uh, I'm gonna actually go to the alternator with it, um, and it's gonna run up and underneath the fuel rails when I get them in place, underneath the uh, throttle body to the power source. What I didn't realize, but I figured out before I bought the kit, is if you want to power up the amp alternator on an LS motor, you actually have to have a special kind of cable. Um, Sloppy Mechanics actually makes a great cable that plugs into the harness. 
Um, so you actually don't have to do anything. However, I ordered the wrong one, so I had to order a different one from Holly. So this is a four like prong alternator and it needs one wire that's an exciter that basically says, hey, the engine's on charge the battery. Inside that, in this little area here, is a resistor. If you don't have that resistor, you'll wipe out the alternator. So I bought a kit from Holly, and I'll go get the part number in a minute, and it's gonna run over to an ignition hot that I also have figured out over here. So those two will run uh, in, in conduit all the way underneath the fuel rails to that side, so that'll be good. This green wire, I'm going to run underneath the truck tomorrow. Uh, this is gonna tell the fuel pump to kick on. So this is my exciter wire for my fuel pump relay. And this blue wire is the tachometer wire, which I don't know if I'm gonna use for this setup until I get a tack, um, because uh, I'm not sure if the Dakota's ECU will be able to decipher that. So I gotta do some research on that. Uh, coming back here, and tomorrow I'll do this too, and then I'll show you when I'm done. This is actually the uh, relay wire for the fuel pump. So this is the 12 volt source. When I hook this up, it turns the fuel pump on. So when I hook this up to the green wire, the ECU will have control of when the fuel pump turns on. So for tonight, I'm gonna shut it down and clean up. I've gotten a lot done, um, but uh, kind of pooped and I'm ready to go sit down and watch some of uh, the videos that are coming up because uh, the Rocky Mountain Race Week is going on right now. So I've been watching some of those videos like Cletus and the Boosted Boys and the uh, 1320 video and they've got great coverage. And, just making me anxious for a drag week. So I'll see y'all in the morning and we'll continue from there. Well, good morning. Uh, I went ahead and started uh, working on the truck this morning. Kind of got right to it. And let me give you an update of what I've done. First of all, I've got another wire right here that wasn't there previously. Um, and this wire goes to the um, poly ECU. So this is the power wire that goes directly to the uh, power connector. Um, and you can see that I have both terminals hooked up. That's because I have put in a battery switch. It's kind of hard to see from here, but there's a black wire that goes to this side of the switch that runs to the Holly ECU as well. And the reason I did that is because I've used my battery, my ground for my battery switch instead of the power. And I know it's not exactly desired, but when I turn this switch on, you can kind of hear the buzzer in the truck. Um, it'll, you know, be a concurrent system. If when it's off like this, it's not running. But since I ran the ground to the ECU here, if something ever happens, if I hit this switch, it'll kill power to the ECU and the truck will stop running. So it's kind of like the same idea of running the power side and then alternator wire all the way up, which I'm just not comfortable with because if I get in a wreck and somehow the, the metal touches this battery switch and it's on a power side, well, that's just gonna create a short. So uh, I'm more comfortable with the ground. We'll see, I'm hoping it'll pass tech. Um, when needed and I'm gonna move this eventually to like a like a plate or if I ever get a, a roll pan so the power wire uh, the power harness is all hooked up I'll show you what I'm doing on the um, the engine all right I'll start over here this red wire goes to is a loose wire in the Holly ECU harness and it needs to go to a uh, power uh, source which this is the alternator output is going to be a good power source because it hooks directly to the fuse block so i'm going to use that as my power source and i have ran this cable which comes from holly and it's actually this same one as this yellow one here remember i said it's got a resistor in it and it has to have that that's why it's black up there and i'm going to run it underneath the fuel rails once i get them on here the red wire goes into the harness here. This is the Holly harness. Yellow wire, I'm gonna run to a wire that I've already located as a key on uh, wire. So when you turn the key on, it'll energize the uh, alternator. So it, it'll know the charge. So that'll be taken care of. 
this green wire here I've just cut. It's the fuel, it's the send to the fuel pump. And I've actually got the fuel pump uh, trigger wire for the relay right down there that I'm gonna hook up to this. And then this is a tack wire and I'm not sure if I'm gonna hook this up. I may like just do it kind of to test when I fire it up. If not, it'll go inside and I'll get an external tack. Um, from there, these two loose wires, not the yellow one. These are the two loose wires that go to the ECU that tell it to turn on. So one is a ground, which is self-explanatory. Then this red with white wire, it's going to a key on source that stays active when you're starting the car. And that's really important. And I've actually already figured that out. It's this like blue wire here. There's a couple different wires. I think there's this blue one with black on it. Um, and then there's this blue, just blue, um, uh, itself the blue one itself keeps power while you're starting so this is your official ignition wire this one is not but get a circuit breaker out and make sure you do your testing before you just hook these things up because it does take you know some good testing to find out where things are at before you just you know throw caution to the wind um there's some good sites online where you can get wiring diagrams um and you know even in some of the groups like on facebook and stuff like they dakota specific you can usually ask for like wiring diagrams and usually they have the stuff that you need so i'm going to button this up with some uh, loom and continue wiring the rest of this up but i'm almost done with this portion of it so uh, once this is over all i gotta do is uh, i'm gonna have to wait on the injector that comes on tomorrow um, and then I'll put all the injectors back in, put the fuel rail back on, and uh, we'll do some firing up. Oh, last thing, this, the yellow wire that has the resistor in it for the alternator, here is the part number. Again, Holly sells it. It's pretty relatively, I think this was like 20 bucks, 197-400. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to it. All right, I got all the wiring done. Some of it I'm going to clean up later because I just don't like the way it all routed. So I will work on that. But anyway, it's not bad overall. It actually looks really clean uh, compared to the factory harness. Um, so this may be the episode where this uh, the Dakota lives. But um, let me uh, let's test out the system real quick. So I've got my Holly Terminator. Uh, little three and a half inch handheld hooked up to the data port right here so it's just this little port kind of looks like usb um my power wires go back here they go through the grommet there and then i ran them underneath the frame the power wire comes up here onto the battery the ground wire goes to the switch so i'm gonna flip this switch so now the switch is on Let's go test out the three and a half inch screen. So there's the screen. Oh, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. All right, it's working. I'm not going to do anything right now because I don't know what to do. Um, I haven't hit that point yet, so. Excellent. Oh, and it turned off too. Perfect. Let me go disconnect the battery. All right, guys. Well, gonna wait on the injectors. I've got one more wire to run, which is the ground wire for the electric fan, uh, so that the terminator kicks it on. Um, other than that, that's the last bit of wiring to do. All right, guys. Last piece here of wiring. I'm going to hook this yellow. I'm sorry, this gray with yellow wire to the ground of my electric fan relay. This is the output harness. Um, so this plugs into the main harness and then you can use all these other ones for inputs and outputs. I believe the uh, grays are all outputs and the whites are all inputs. Um, but long story short, yep, this is going to the electric fan relay. I've already got it ran in the truck. Um, and then I'll plug it in and get it all kind of tied up out of the way. And that'll be the last piece of wiring. Whew. This right here is the last piece of the puzzle. So I'm going to throw it in the fuel rail. 
and then I'm going to throw the fuel rail on. I'm going to push the truck outside. We're going to go through the wizard on the uh, holly, and then we're going to turn that key. I'm really stoked. <laughs> So uh, let me get this done and take my time so I can make sure I don't forget anything. Alright, the last piece here is I gotta throw this injector harness on and you can see. Um, I thought it said injector somewhere, but <laughs> it does on the, the main harness. So it's gonna plug into here. You can see it says injector. On the little injectors, it's really hard to see. Um, but it actually has the cylinders on there, so it's very imperative that the cylinders are correct. So take your time, and uh, you know, cylinder one, three, five, seven is on the driver's side, two, four, six, eight is on the passenger side. So let me get those hooked up, okay, guys. I'm gonna turn on the ignition. The uh, screen is firing up, so it tells me to do a TPS auto set, which we're not doing yet, but I'm going to go through the wizard. So, I'm going to go through wizards, and we're going to go to GCF wizard. We're going to go for the point fuel injection. Yep. So, next. System, we're going to go for GMLS. Next. Number of cylinders. I guess it's loading. Let's go back again. DMLS selected. I can't quite see them there, but okay, that's eight. Next firing order. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and go with leaders. And I've never done this before, FYI, so. We'll say 5.3. Maybe. Oh man, it's hot out. Here we go. Target auto speed, we'll say like 750. And I got a stock cam in it, camshaft in it now, so I'll just do below 235 degrees duration. And it's a 24 tooth. And fuel pressure is going to be, I got it set at 55, so I'm going to do 60 here. And it's injectors are OEM. Now this is where I'm going to take a second out and do some research. All right, guys, so for my research, for some reason they don't have the same ones on here. Um, but the 288 injector is the closest to the ones I have. Um, it's a 28, 24 pound injector versus my 22 pound injector. Um, so I'm going to go with that because I don't really have anything else that's close. Um, it's kind of, kind of is what it is. So the 288 is picked. I'm going to go to next. No power adders at the moment. Did I go back one? Yeah, I'm done. And then internal one bar map sensor. I got a drive by cable, so that's not correct. Um, yeah, IACs, DM, stock, transcription control. Now, when I do a 4 LED, I'll click yes here, but I don't have a 4 LED, so I'm going to click no. What did it do? No. All right. So now it's loading everything in. Awesome. So please cycle the ignition off, on, fuel pump, fuel pump just ran, still running, very good. Alright, I'm going to push it outside before I start, um, so I'll do this TPS auto set real quick though. So we'll say okay, wizards, TPS auto set, make sure the ignition on, the engine is not started. Correct. Alright, just to the floor and slowly release twice. One, two. Next, TPS auto set was successful. Done. 
All right, let me push the truck outside and we'll try to fire her up. Okay, here goes nothing. I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna go to monitor, multi-gauge, um, vitals. Okay. So remember I said this was going to be a learning process? Well, that couldn't be a more truthful statement. Um, I already learned a couple things, and I'm going to go over that here really shortly. Um, first of all, the Terminator X has a like idle kind of like guide or procedure. It's really important to follow that because um, I was able to kind of look at things, and it tells you to look at your... Um, what is it? Your it tells you to look at your idle air control percentage when it's warm, and then make adjustments to the little screw on the throttle body uh, to get it within range. And they want it from like two to ten percent when it's warm. Um, I was able to figure that out yesterday, and it idles pretty good now. I, I still need to like throw a little bit of a turn in it, and I'll show you where that is in just a second. Secondly, I was able to go through the handheld. Um, and uh, adjust the fuel injectors to what mine are rated for. So I looked up the part number, I found out that they're rated for 21 pounds uh, at 48 PSI. So I was able to enter that information in the, uh, the uh, Holly Terminator X uh, on the handheld. You didn't, I didn't even have to use the uh, laptop for it. Um, and then it says what your actual um, fuel pressure which it was 55 at that point in time so you can actually set that as well and then it can kind of go from there um, so I was able to kind of correct that it's still running like crap though when you uh, give it any throttle um, or anything and I, I had no clue but after my research because I kind of slept on it last night and did some research there is a onboard map sensor on the PCM. It's a little blue line that comes out. If you're running NA, like I am, you're supposed to pretty much use that blue sensor is what I'm reading. And the thing is, even though the harness has a plug-in for the factory map sensor on the intake manifold, uh, it's not reading it. It's actually not set up for it. I'd have to go into the uh, Holly... Uh, desktop or the holly laptop um like tuning and then tell it what to look at but since everybody says just want, run the one that's already on the uh, pcm that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to hook that up so i'm actually going to show you guys that first sorry guys it's really really bright out but this is the factory 5.3 intake manifold and i'm going to have you look at this boss on the side of the block 
uh, I mean on the side of the intake not block there is this actual little vacuum port and it's actually n plugged right now because it's never been decapped so I'm going to decap it and there's this just little plastic thing right here and we're gonna turn look at that now it's nice and open so I'm gonna run a vacuum line from that to the ECU um, on the inside so it's a quarter inch line so let me get that and then run it inside and then I'll show you the rest okay so I've got my quarter inch vacuum line ran it's going into the firewall already so I'm gonna cut this to where I can get it ran to there and then in the kit comes these little vacuum adapters so I need to get the quarter inch one might go a bit bigger but that's okay it'll actually seal better and these are actually what's called a lure lock if you work in the medical field and just twist on here and then we're gonna go in with the vacuum line this should be a game changer so now let's try to start the truck Well guys, I don't know uh, quite else what to say, but this this has been an amazing like nine months. It's It's been tough. It's been a lot of work to get done in a short amount of time. Um, but Dakota runs and it drives. And uh, you know, one year ago, it was sitting in under a quarter inch of dust, all disassembled uh, in my mom's garage. And, in case you haven't been following um, 
this uh, journey of the Dakota, uh, about 19 or 20 years ago, I had an engine fire um, on a 318 that I had in this thing. And I took it to a buddy's shop uh, to kind of get some new motor mounts made and fix the fire and stuff like that. And while it was at a shop, it got ran into in the parking lot and it messed up the frame. So uh, when that happened, I sold the engine in trans and I put the truck up at my mom's house and I put it in her garage and I didn't touch it for like 20 years. Um, so in September of 2019, I pulled it out. It was nothing but a cab and a bed on a frame with some wheels and tires um, with a bit bent frame horn and now it's complete it runs and drives it has gauges it has fuel injection it has brakes and everything else it's supposed to have and uh, we've gotten that done in a short amount of time thanks to some friends and I'd really like to send some uh, thank yous out one to uh, my best friend Tommy Kogan and my other best friend Greg Lesniak who have really helped me out along the way on this thing um, we couldn't have it where it's at without you guys and then uh, just everybody else that has you know been able to donate some parts like the oil pan uh, from Chris Provo and the pickup tube from uh, Michael Kayser and, and Billy and just for a lot of motivation and questions and stuff like that um, I'd like to thank uh, Nick Evdos at uh, Brian Tooley Racing and Keith Finstead who's a I'm going to be going um, on Drag Week with. He's bringing his uh, awesome Fairmont, and I'm excited to see all that. And then Chuck with his um, LTD wagon, I believe it is. Um, he's uh, also coming. He's been helpful um, with the Dakota and the um, the Nova. So just thank you, everybody, that's, that's helped to get us to this point. Um, there's a lot more to come, a whole lot more to come. And I'm going to put out a little video showing kind of the history of the build. Um, just kind of going over a quick uh, synopsis of it. But um, I'm actually working on it again uh, today. Um, and you'll see that video coming out very shortly. But uh, thank you guys for coming along. Thanks for all the support. There's actually t-shirts of the Drag Week Dakota that you can buy on our website at racerxgarage.com. Please, please, please consider subscribing um, if you're enjoying this content. Um, it's a lot of work, but I really enjoy uh, making these videos and uh, I'm hoping to, you know, gain more followers and get some more stuff done on the projects. Um, lastly, uh, if you can, follow us on Instagram at the TheRacerX Garage. Uh, same thing on Facebook. You can find us at the TheRacerX Garage. Um, and I just can't wait to get this thing to the track, which is probably only a couple weeks away. Um, so then again, thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you later on down the road. Until next time, you know the deal. Y'all be good.